it's very important that people see this film. It has to start a conversation. We need to come out of the closets and start talking about this. This is not like a heart attack. We give the medicine, you know, we do our studies, everything's fine. One, one thing that's very misunderstood is we get a CAT scan, a computerized tomography scan, the thing they do in the emergency room. We get an MRI and everything's clean, everything's okay. Well, it, that doesn't tell us about the functioning of the brain. It tells us about structure of the brain. We order neuropsychological tests, which is not about people thinking they're crazy. It's about how the brain functions. Because people don't understand the brain is talking to itself 24-7 all parts, all times, every day. And when you destroy those connections, when you alter those connections, things have changed. And yet, the person can walk, talk, and look good. This has to start a conversation. This has to start asking the question, are we doing enough? Are we providing the funds? Are we providing the education? Are provi and education is not just to the family. It's to the departments of education in each city. I cannot tell you how many times I've had to sit and fight the educators who say they're, they're, they're limited by their funds. Well, they give you physical and occupational speech therapy until you're three years old. Well, that's great. Or they'll give you a little t extra test time. That's great. But they run for the hills sometimes. And there are wonderful people out there. But if that's our school system, and we know with Brian Stewart, that's, the, that's our our working environment. How about the people who don't have those support systems or those places to go to? We don't have residential facilities in numbers. In this state of Illinois, there are over 2,000 people, young people in psychiatric institutions. They have nowhere to go. This story needs to be told. People need to understand, let's stop fooling ourselves. And, and they look, they're okay. They sound okay. They walk okay. Their MRI is normal that they are okay. They aren't okay. They're trying to have a life. They're trying to put a life back together. You can't sugarcoat problems that are lifelong. You can't sugarcoat a, a problem that is largely ignored, misunderstood, and denied, not just in families, but in sport, and now with the Army and the, the armed services. This is something that people live with the rest of their life, and, and Brian has put together an extraordinary book that tells us the foibles, the strengths, the, the controversy, the prejudice. And it isn't all rosy. It's, it's hard. This is an ongoing battle. It's a lifelong battle. This is not something that stops when the cameras start, stop rolling or when he, he leaves the day after a tough day at work. This is something that, that exists when he gets up in the morning when he's at work, when he's talking to people, when he leaves work, when he sees his family, when he tries to go to sleep. This is something that's day and night. This is not a scar. This is a, a metamorphosis. This is a total change in a, who this person is. People don't understand that brain injury is the most narcissistic thing you can do to a person. It changes the personality. It changes who they are. It, they forget who, what, where, and how they are, how they function. And, and to sit there and rewrite your own history, to start again with your wife, with your kids, with your vocation, with, with, with your family, your parents, is extraordinary. He doesn't sugarcoat it. And that's why it's so important, because this is not, this is not a story of everything is rosy and we're going to tie it up nicely and in two hours and life goes on and we can go home from a theater or go home to or go to the kitchen after watching this on TV and say, ah, whew, glad things worked out. No, this doesn't have an ending. This is just the beginning. And that's why his story is, is really telling the beginning of a change. Not just the injury, but what's happened in his life on a day-to-day -day basis and how public, the public and his, his friends have reacted to it. They don't understand. He, he can walk, talk, he looks okay, he sounds okay. Well, this is a silent epidemic. This is, this is a problem with, with brain injury. 
I've had many patients, and I, I'm involved with the public and I'm involved with the armed services. They've told me once, if they've told me a hundred times, I wish I'd lost my leg, I wish I'd lost my arm, I wish, wish I'd gone blind, so people can see and observe and recognize my injury. Most patients walk around and they're, they're invisible. And then the family doesn't understand. And so what happens is they're ignored. They're not ignored in the intensive care unit. They're not ignored when they try to go back to work. But then people go to their own corners and they live their own lives and they forget. He can't forget. He's living this. I won't call it a nightmare, but I call it a new life. At Rush University Medical Center, we have a, we have a very special program called the Road Home Program. I've been very fortunate to be part of in the education of our medics that go to Iraq and Afghanistan. We've been doing this our 10th year. The Road Home Program is unique in that it's trying to educate not just the soldiers, but especially the caregivers of those soldiers, the families, the kids. Because our VA programs are wonderful in attempting to take care of the, our, our soldiers doesn't pay, doesn't address those patients, families, wives, husbands, whomever. What about vocation? What about getting someone back to work? What about the training? That's what we're involved in. And the Wounded Warrior Project, we're one of the four centers in the country that's been afforded monies for education, for treatment, for post-traumatic stress, for traumatic brain injury, for the psychiatric, for the vocational. For, the, for, for even living situations for these individuals.